Lumaki si Yvonne sa Dumaguete City. Nag-asawa siya ng Canadian at nagpalaki ng tatlong anak sa Pilipinas. After a few years, sabi ng asawa ko, o oh, ayaw mo ba makita yung Canada? So, ayaw ko. Dito na lang tayo tumira sa Pilipinas kasi maganda ang buhay. Yung weather, mainit. Punta every weekend, pumunta kami sa beach, you know, mga bata, gusto sila ng... Kasi we, we live close sa, sa ocean. Pero nagpumilit ang asawa ni Yvonne at lumawa sila sa Canada labing walong taon na ang nakaraan. Pag malamig sa Pilipinas, you just put on a sweater. Kung malamig, ang malamig sa amin, 25 degree Celsius. Pero nung dumating kami dito, it was spring, tapos 10 degrees yata sa Vancouver. I was really cold. So, yung sweater lang yung damit ko. So, hindi ko alam na you have to have something more than a sweater. Sabi ko, my God, an ito talag bat ang buhay ko dito. <laughs> Isa si Eluteria sa mga unong nakarating noong 1971. Sa Pilipinas niya pinakasalan ang Canadian na asawa. I got married in 1970 and uh, he was in the Navy. But uh, he uh, wanted to explore the North. He wanted to do some prospecting, gold prospecting and uh, trapping. He owned a, a trap line there. On the way, I could see this uh, white mountain. The moon was uh, was shining very brightly. It was so awesome. Unti-unting lumalago ang ekonomiya ng Yukon nito mga nakaraang taon, kung saan saan naghanap ng mga manggagawa ang mga kompanya sa Yukon. For the first five years, it was always um, uh, difficult and a challenge to get staff. Uh, that started to keep me up at night. The local territorial government created the Yukon Nominee Program, the YMP. Kailangan patunayan ng kumpanya na di ito makahanap ng empleyado sa Canada. Dalawang taon ang visa ng work permit, tapos kailangan mag-apply para sa permanent residency. And so the program grew. And it was the Filipino community that gained a lot of trust from the employer group. And we realized that we, we had a mechanism that worked and it just kept on growing. A while ago, I uh, come home minus 32, about 3 o'clock. Halos dalawang taon na nung dumating si Norris at nagtrabaho bilang isang mekaniko sa Whitehorse, Kapitolyo ng Yukon. Uh, mahaba na rin panahon na hindi kami nagkikita, nagdito lang through webcam. Apo means uh, grandson. And then this is my daughter, my anak. She is the mother of uh, my grandson, my first grandson, unang apo. <laughs> Umalis si Norris ang Pilipinas noong 2002 para suportahan ang pamilya. Nagumpisa siyang magtrabaho bilang isang marine mechanic sa U.S. Naval Base sa Guantanamo Bay. Pagkatapos ng isang buwan, na-promote niya ako bilang chief engineer ng patrol boat. And then uh, nasa Caribbean Sea kami, doon kami nagbabantay sa Caribbean Sea. Ilan sa mga Pilipino sa Yukon ay nagtayo ng sarili nilang business. Labing dalawang taon nang nagtatrabaho si Joy sa sarili niyang tindahan. Magaling na akong magbenta ng mga goods, kaya-kaya ng mga, mga lotions, mga sabon. Magandang produkto ito. Kaya lang, hindi ko, hindi, uh, it's not sufficient para maka-maintain ako ng mga uh, workers and isang kaibigan ko ang nagsabing sa akin na bakit hindi ka mag-start na mag-open ng, ng Pilipino store? So, yan ang ginawa ko. So, ngayon, ika-second year na itong Pilipino store and through this store, I was able to bring my cousin from the Philippines and malaking tulong para, para sa kanila. Kahit yung isa kong pamangkin na kailangan nila ng tulong with this store, uh, nadala ko sila. So, um, there, a lot, there are lots of lives that this store has changed and even my life. Napalitan ng dating patrol boat ni Norris sa Guantanamo Bay ng isang radar station. Yung unang aplikasyon niya sa embahada ng Canada para sa work permit ay tinanggihan. Ngayon, nung madinay kami ron, umuwi ako ng Pilipinas. One year akong standby, walang trabaho. Then, sabi ko sa misis ko, asawa ko, Oh, hey, 
Wala akong trabaho, ikaw magpakain sa akin ngayon. Stand by, you have to feed me. They might say that, uh, you know, they are just lazy and that they don't have a job, but it's not true. It, they don't have a job because there are no jobs available. If you are an ordinary working person, you cannot even afford to buy a car, not even a bike, if you have a big family. <laughs> so how much more for a house and uh, a car? It's not, it's not possible. Tapos doon sa Pilipinas, kasi maraming, yung poverty, it's all over the place, yung poverty. Yung mga tao na may mahihirap, walang trabaho, they're desperate. There was a boss ahead of us that was hijacked and they took the money, all their money from them. And, uh, and uh, luckily, we were behind them and they didn't touch us. Well, the time I visited the Philippines, I think that's the only place I've ever seen armed guards standing outside a McDonald's to make sure that the people inside the McDonald's are safe. Nakatira ka doon sa magandang bahay at nakikita nila na may pera ka, they will go and rob you, you know? So, tapos nire-rape yung mga, ano, they'll do whatever they want, you know? As long as to get what they want. Dalawampot apat na taon nang nakatira si Joy sa Yukon. Matapos maging nani, naging permanent resident siya at pwede na maghanap ng ibang trabaho. Para kasi ako lang mag-isa ang mag-provide ng finances, kaya lahat ng trabaho, trinabaho ko. Mag, pagkatapos kong magtrabaho doon, mag-house cleaning kami. And then, naghanap ako ng isang trabaho ko sa, sa hotel. Taga-scrub ako noon ng, ng hagdanan. <laughs> where the uh, foreign workers could come to Canada, apply to become Canadian residents, and then have a permanent status. Uh, that would allow them to, um, to buy a house, um, live, bring their families in, and would also allow them the opportunity to work two jobs. So once they became Canadian residents, they could have a full-time job and a part-time job, and I would say about 80% of our staff have two jobs. If they are in poverty in the Philippines, they come here to work hard. They want also nice things and a uh, nice house and uh, to settle here where it's peaceful, clean and uh, friendly uh, atmosphere. Yung mga malaganap na Pilipino sa Yukon ang siya nagdadala ng kanilang pamilya mula sa Pilipinas sa pamamagitan ng Yukon Nominee Program. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon kasi uh, kami ng asawa ko, siya ang... Masasabi mong yung isa sa mga key person na nagdala ng mga Pilipino um, workers sa Canada. Nagpunta po ako dito para mabago naman yung pamumuhay namin na alam naman po nating mahirap talagang mabuhay sa Pilipinas. Nagpapasalamat din po ako kay tita sa aking employer na sila din po ang dahilan kaya nandito ako sa Canada ngayon. Mm, napakabait po nila. Sila po lahat yung gumastos lahat-lahat ng mga <laughs> mga lahat, papeles para makarating kami, para makarating ako dito. Pagkatapos magtrabaho ni Norris sa Yukon ng dalawang taon at maging permanent resident, inaasahan niyang makarating ang kanyang pamilya sa Canada. Sa ngayon, mananatili muna sa Maynila ang pamilya para makapaghanda na dumayo sa Canada. Dahil uh, yun yung kailangan bago sila magpunta rito sa Canada, yung asawa ko at saka yung dalawang anak ko. So yung asawa ko at saka yung anak kong 20 years old, magkasama sila para mag-orient. And then yung maliit, yung mas bata, eh, mag-counseling. Uh, and they just wait na. After two years, they become residents and then they can sponsor sa pamilya nila. Then the they kids and spouses can join them. So after pagkatapos ng dalawang taon. So they just wait for that and after that they'll be together. So a little bit of sacrifice, that's okay for long term. Si Sabrina ang anak na babae ni Yvonne. Bibisitahin niya si Jojo, isang hairdresser na galing din sa Pilipinas para magpagupit. Tell me about your story. I was born in the Philippines. Um, you may make in the Philippines also? Or yeah. you made here in White Boy? No, I was not. <laughs> you were made and born. <laughs> made and born. Made in the and born. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but I was raised here and this has always been my home. I go I go see my family because all our aunts and uncles and 
grandma and grandpa, they live there. Uh huh. So we do go home to see them, but I've I've grown up without them. Okay. I'm I'm very much Canadian. Ah, oh, okay. Your yeah. soul, your heart and soul is Canadian. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I don't know anybody. Even Filipinos, I don't know. You I don't, don't have, have relatives. Family over here? I don't have family. Yeah. I'm alone. I'm so brave, eh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Para napaka hirap ng kalagayan namin sa Pilipinas. Kaya lang, kaya lang puta puta sa ibang basa para magtrabaho. Mm -hmm. More aggressive para to earn, to earn a living also to say yeah. to send them a little. Mm -hmm. Ang iniingit ko yung bakit nakikita ko yung mga Filipinos. Yung kasama yung family nila. Dapat yeah. na lang ako, I'm yeah. beginning to cry. Uh -huh. Without any reason. Huh? Parang sa sabiti ako, why? When they're happy and I'm not. Yeah. Yun, yun ang mga, yun ang mga, yun ang mga frustrations ko. Mm -hmm. Para sabi ko, sana na maging, ano ba yung, yung someday, mm -hmm. na madala ko rin sila here in yeah. Canada or makabalik naman ako doon. Yeah. I, you know, I'm looking forward to that this year. Mm -hmm. Sana hopefully. Sa dalawang taon ng work permit sa ilalim ng Yukon Nominee Program, kailangan manatili sa isang kumpanya o amo ang foreign worker. Kung mawalan siya ng trabaho sa loob ng dalawang taong kontrata, malalagay sa panganib ang pagkakataon niyang maging permanent resident. Pero hindi nating maganda yung ano dahil Kala namin eh, mabait yung amo. Mahirap magkwento. <laughs> na mal nung malapit na akong ma-residence, nag-away kami, isang bagay lang, customer din. We have a uh, argument with one customer, Filipino customer. So, okay lang. Sabi ko, kung alisin mo ko, alisin mo na ako. Ngayon na. Hindi, kanya, bibigyan kita ng one week notice. So sa 11, kanya, hanggang ano, sa 11, start. Sabi ko, ganun ba? O di ka ako, 11 pa lang, alis na ako. Nakatira si Nori sa pagawaan at nawalan ng bahay nung natanggalan ng trabaho. Kung walang permanent residency, trabaho o pera, hindi niya pwedeng ma-sponsor ang kanyang pamilya para dumayo at makasama sa Canada. You know, they come here and they're far away from their home and their family. And a lot of them come here originally on their own to try to set themselves up so they can bring their family a few years uh, down the road. We had one of our cashiers who returned to the Philippines after two years and, and her own daughter didn't even recognize her. Uh, a lot of sacrifices that they make to, uh, to set up a new life here in, in Whitehorse. May bagong alok na trabaho si Norris bilang mekaniko sa isang drilling company sa Yukon. Nagpunta ako ng immigration. Ang sabi ng immigration, hindi ka pa residence, Mr. Kempis. Kanya, hindi ka pwedeng pagtrabaho. You are not yet residence. You are not allowed to work. Not unless you are confirmed. Sabi ko, kaya nga ako ma'am nandito eh. That's the reason why I'm here, ma'am. I want to know everything. Gustong magbukas ni Aileen ng bagong tindahan na may karinderiya para sa mga Pilipino at ibang taga-Asya. Sa Yukon, nakatira si Aileen mula 1989. Mulat sa pulpa, uh, nag, nagsa-struggle na ako yung pagkain dito kasi lahat, you know, like, uh, it's really far north and it's really, really hard to get, uh, you know, yung mga typical na pagkain. So ever since, uh, it's been like uh, my desire na hopefully magkakaroon ng Filipino store. I'm excited, pero mas uh, uh, nakakanervyos. Since I came up here in Yukon, um, I will consider na this is the big, the biggest step. Mostly na mga magtatrabaho dito will be uh, Filipino workers. So far, in less than three years, siguro yung natutulungan ko para pumunta dito, mga more or less mga 25 people na na nakarating dito dahil sa bagong program ng Yukon Nominee. One of the exciting things that uh, I would like to see here sa dining, uh, we will do uh, ano, yung karaoke night, you know, like Friday, every Friday night. And then at the same time, yung mayroong Filipino channel. Tinuturing isang malaking potensyal pangkalakalan ang pagdami ng mga Pilipino sa Yukon. Halos dalawang libong Pilipino na ang nakatira dito. 
the Filipino community obviously continues to grow very significantly in northern communities, particularly in Whitehorse. And um, it was in response to that growth that we really looked at the opportunity to bring some content, if you like, to our cable system that would meet the needs of the Filipino community. But it was more based on our, our understanding of how the population continues to grow and the need for us to be responsive to that market as we go forward. And we talked to the Filipino Association here in Whitehorse and a number of our Filipino employees as well, and there seemed to be quite an interest in having a connection back to the Philippines to allow people to, you know, be able to see some of the things that continue to happen back there, because they're a long way from home, obviously. No una, hirap, kasi wala akong pamilya dito, nag-iisa akong namumuhay dito, tapos iba talagang pakiramdam bilang ama na yung pamilya mo na sa ibang bansa. Ito yung mga skits, mga hockey staff na wala ito sa Pinas. Dito lang sa Yukon, Canada. Sa umpisa, yung unang araw ko sa trabaho dito, inasayan ako bilang mintinan sa floor dito. Nagwawalis ako, nagdadala ako ng sampuni. Tapos kumatok yung oportunidad sa akin, pinatrabaho ako sa hardware bilang field crew. Tapos hindi nag-stop doon ang oportunidad ko, kumatok again. Naging uh, supervisor ako dito sa sports department. I'm finding the Filipino people that have come to the territory incredibly helpful when I need help. Yes, there is sometimes a language barrier, but if you uh, explain yourself adequately, uh, they try their best to help you. I, I would rather have a worker that shows up on time, knows where the product is, works hard, and has a slight accent or communication skill than someone speaks perfect English but doesn't show up for it. Pero challenging yung buhay dito. Uh, dahil sa klima, yung lamig na may sporte, hindi mo may imagine. Parang uh, nakatira ka sa ilalim ng refrigerator. Nagsusurvive kami dito. Alang-alang sa pamilya. Tapos yung may mga ano tayo kasi sa buhay. May mga dream tayo sa buhay na dapat makamit. Because of um gusto mong mapabuti yung yung kabuhayan ng pamilya mo talagang malaking sakripisyo kagaya ng uh, maraming uh, nagtatrabaho dito na ganun ang ginawa nila um, they're doing that kasi para sa mga anak nila for the future sa mga anak nila kasi pag yung mga anak nila andito sila tapos na educated ng Canadian way yung future nila mas maigi and then okay kanya Gagawa tayo ng paraan dyan, kanya. Bukas, tomorrow, come over here, 2.30. Take your oath. Thursday, 11, I got uh, residence. <laughs> Confirmed. I am legally a resident na ng Whitehorse. I can work. Masarap ano eh, masarap isipin na ganun yung nangyari. Kasi nga, in return, what you have planted, if you planted the good kind of rice, it will give you a good kind of rice. So kung nagtanim ka ng mabuti, it will come back mabuti rin. <laughs> Ang balik mabuti. So nawala ng power. <laughs> yeah, sa Pilipinas, hmm, sometimes pagka nawala ng kuryente, dalawang oras, pinakamaiksi yun. Dalawang oras, Kala, one, one day, isang araw. Hmm. Very bad. Lahat ng mga pagkain mo sa freezer, oh, oh, masisira yun. Di na kayang painitin ni Norris ang kanyang bahay. At ngayong walang kuryente, magiging sobrang lamig dito sa loob. Every time na meron akong bisita in the Philippines, bakit kanya yung suot ni Kuya Norris? Kanya, ang kapal-kapal. It's too thick. Then says, how come... Uh, Kuya Norris is wearing that thick of kind of clothes. And then my wife will tell them. Kasi ano doon? Minus 40. Minus 35. Normal nila doon. Zero. Ano? Zero. Kasi gusto rin nilang maranasan kung ano yung dinadaanas natin nandito sa Whitehorse. Yung mga negative 40 na kwento ko lang na nakikita. Then pinakikita ako sa kanila through to webcam, pinakikita ko sa kanila yung snow, kung paano natatakpan yung kotse ng snow, kung ano pa paano kami nag o oh, nagbobuldos ng no, inang nagsho-shovel ng snow sa labas. Gusto rin nilang ma-experience yung mahawakan nila talaga yung andiyan yung yelo, pero magsasawa din sila pagdating ng araw dahil 
Sino ba naman yung may gusto ng puro yelo na lang? From the Philippines, we have to go direct to uh, Dawson City. Uh, during our travel, he, we were having conversation about the North being uh, so cold in the winter. And uh, he said to me that uh, in no circumstance, you never have your feet or your hand or any of your body get frozen. Because if it does, it will get rotten and won't heal and then it will be amputated. Sumakay ng bus si Eleuteria at ang kanyang asawa patungong Dawson City, kung saan minus 52 Celsius ang temperatura. Malaking diferensya sa mahigit 22 Celsius sa Pilipinas. When we were getting off the, uh, the bus, I thought that uh, I was pushed into a huge freezer in that time. I remember when he was telling me that don't get any bio, any part of your body get frozen. I was feeling my my face and it was getting stiffer and I thought, "Oh my god, what if my face get frozen? You know, will my head be amputated too?" You know, lumipad kami patungong Dawson City, napakaliit na komunidad sa sentro ng maalamat na Klondike Gold Rush. Yeah, Dawson just coming inside the head of us now. You can look downstream on the Yukon River. Talagang iba rito. So kung sanay ka sa malaking lugar, malaking syudad, hindi ka magsusurvive rito, iiyak ka sa lungsod. Dahil wala ka mapupunta, hindi ka mag-enjoy dito. Pera para sa pamilya, kumita para sa pamilya, and tasin mo na. Ito yung kung saan nag-uumpisa pa lang magsulat yung dalawang anak ko. We say, Mama, we love you. So, dalawa sila. So, nung makita ko to, kasama nung ibang mga pictures na pinadala sa akin, parang feeling ko parang inano yung puso ko talaga. Shattered siya na, sabi ko, how I wish, nasa akin yung mga anak ko para mayakap ko man lang, mama, you know. Nakatira ang dalawang anak ni Shirley sa mga kamag-anak nito sa Pilipinas. Ang mga tito at tita ang nagsisilbing magulang ng kanyang mga anak at hindi siya natunay nilang ina. Maipadama ko sa kanila na, kahit malayo ako, kahit wala ako sa tabi nila, you know, sa puso ko, anak ko pa rin sila, mahal ko pa rin sila. Pero ang saan lang is, sana naman maramdaman nyo na lahat ng pinadala namin sa inyo is, ano yan, uh, bunga ng paghihirap. Ang sa amin lang naman, kung magpadala kami, is spend it wisely. Okay. Gastusin sa maayos na huwag yung napunta lang sa kung saan-saan. Although hindi namin maiwasan talaga yon, kasi malay pa namin kung saan yung talaga ginastos. Malaki ang kinikita ng Pilipinas mula sa perang padala ng mga nag-iibang bayan, mahigit sa 20 bilyong dolyares taon. You know, para makakuha ng better life, yung better for the family, for me, for, my, for the kids, or for my son, ay hindi ko rin alam na mga kapag asawa ko dito o oh, mamimit ko ang ang asawa ko and this is ma eto yung aking maliit na anak pangalawa kong anak sa si Zoe yan nung nagbuta ko dito ang um, yung anak ko na iwan ko sa Pilipinas 10 months pa lang siya so it's really hard kasi kailangan kong isakripisyo yung pag-aalaga ko sa kanya el yan nakaka kasi mag magtat mag-aapat na taon na siya And nakikita ko lang siya eh, although every week through computer. Ay, no, may barney si kuya. But syempre, mas masarap pa rin yung ako yung nag-aalaga sa anak ko, di ba? Uh, yun nga lang, yun nga, sakripisyo para sa, sa pamilya. So, it's really, really hard. And then, that time also, hindi ko hindi namin alam na yung tatay namin may sakit pala. So, I had to go, go back home. Kasi nga, uh, nagkaroon siya ng lung cancer na nobody knows. Like, mabilisan. So, sa tulong din ng pinsan ko, uh, tinulungan niya ako sa pagbili ng ticket para lang muna makauwi kasi naka-26 days pa lang ako sa trabaho. And then, nasa hospital ang tatay ko. So, yeah. <laughs> It's really, really hard. Tahimik na lugar, gusto ko siya, yeah, um, komportable. Wala kang takot, walang kaba, walang takot. Yun lang ang, ang 
gusto ko rito. Masasabi kong safe dahil sa oras ng trabaho ko na matatapos ako ng madaling araw or umaga, pwedeng maglakad kahit mag-isa. Para sa aking shift, ang aking shift po ay mag-uumpisa ng alas 11 ng gabi hanggang alas 7 ng umaga. Aside na front desk yung trabaho ko. Hi! Not too bad. I've met a few Filipinos in the Yukon and they, they leave their children at home, they come over here to build a better life. And, you know, like they work as though it's not happening. I couldn't do it. It would be absolutely heartbreaking. So I'm, I'm very impressed by pretty much all the Filipinos I meet, like sacrificing what they do and the time with their family and their children to try and build a better life for everybody. So I have nothing but respect for them. Niintay ko lang makuha yung uh, uh, residency but uh, tapos na ako sa pagme-medical and pati yung anak ko nag-medical na. So iniintay na lang namin yung uh, results. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, ngayong March or May, sana makuha ko yung papel ko and then uh, makarating siya dito bago matapos yung taon. Really excited na makuha ko siya. <laughs> yeah. Lalabas si Ivona at ang kanyang anak na si Sabrina. Makikipagsapalaran sa lamig at sasakay ng kareta ng mga aso. Hey, how are you guys? Hey, Frank. How are you? Good to see you here. Good to see you. Welcome I'm Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. And this is my daughter, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. <laughs> Welcome to Muck Talk. This is really great. You guys ready for a big day on the sled? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's minus 35, so I'm kind of worried. I no, hope we'll I won't be cold. Warm. We're going to get you uh, dressed up in okay. good parka and mitts and the boots. And the boots. And okay. With the sun coming up now over the mountain, um, it's going to warm up, you know, maybe minus 20 or minus 20 is just perfect. Minus That's 20. just beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Minus 20 is. Wow. I feel like I'm gearing up for space. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Woo! This is so different <laughs> from... Uh, where I come from, we just, we're usually half naked. Because <laughs> we're going to the beach. <laughs> Malungkot siya, naiiwan niya yung apo niya, tsaka yung dalawang anak niya. Yung apo, he's only one year old and one month. May masyado na siyang malapit sa apo niya. Nakikita ko medyo masakit para sa asawa ko yung iwanan niya yung apo niya. Pero hindi <laughs> Apo niya naman yun eh. Tsaka kailangan nila akong tulungan dito. They have to help me here. My, I'm paying my rent, 1,400, ang laki. Plus oil, electricity, so halos mauubos ko yung 2,000 dolyar. Para sa expenses lang. Wala pang pagkain. Housing here is uh, almost as expensive as it is in Vancouver right now. But there are more jobs available. Uh, wages are a little better. Taxes are a little lower. There's more opportunity here. You guys are ready? Yes. Excited? <laughs> are you? Ben, be careful. Not too fast. Oh my God. <laughs> I love tropical places. I love the heat. But I definitely, when I come home, I um, I appreciate the temperature we have here because it put more clothes on, but you can't take more clothes off. <laughs> Ang mga panganay na anak ni Norris ay hindi makarating sa Canada kasama ng ibang miyembro ng pamilya dahil hindi nababatay sa edad. I'm uh, I'm so uh, you know, I'm so happy uh, even though dalawa lang sa anak ko yung makakarating. It's only two of my kids can come. It's okay. Siguro may magagawa akong paraan para makuha ko rin the rest, yung ibang anak ko. Makukuha ko rin sila. Makapunta sila dito ng mid of February or be before before Valentine's Day. Eh? I like them to be here before Valentine's Day. It's, it's... <laughs> it will not be Valentine. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Nagbago ang lahat. 
pauwi na si Norris sa Pilipinas dahil bigla ang namatay ang panganay na anak na lalaki. Nag-abuloy ang bagong amo at mga kaibigan ni Norris sa Yukon nung umuwi ito sa Pilipinas para ilibing ang panganay na anak na si Francis. Ang bisa ni Norris ay naatraso sa embassy. Hindi siya makabalik kasama ng kanyang pamilya. Lumuwas ang kanyang asawa at dalawang anak papuntang Yukon sa unang pagkakataon. May halong nervous yung pagpasok pa lang. Sabi ko nahihiya naman, nahihiya naman ako at marami susundo. Good flight? People are good? We have a good trip. <laughs> Pag uh, magsakay namin, paano ba naman eh? Sabi ko, Daddy, bakit hindi natin dinaanan si Francis? Sabi ko, wala sabi ko, bakit hindi natin dinaanan? Sabi ko. We try to bring all the families. Okay, I'll bring my husband, my kids, my ma mama and papa and nanay and, you know, Lola and neighbors and, and cousins and cousins of cousins and friends from the next village, you know, because we want to, to bring everybody because family is important. Sa wakas, natanggap rin ni Norris ang kanyang visa at nakabalik sa Yukon dalawang araw pagkatapos dumating ang pamilya. There we are, we are talking about uh, my son who passed away. Mahirap man na uh, iniwan ko ang Pilipinas na merong malaking problema kung kung sa anak ko. Siyempre, itong pagbabalik ko rito para rin sa mga anak ko na ito na naiwan. So, kailangan ko rin tumatag sa sarili ko kung ano man yung nangyari. Tayo na ka ba? Oo. Masayang nagkasama-sama muli ang pamilya sa Yukon, pero yanig pa rin sa nangyari sa kanilang anak na lalaki at kapatid. Sa unang pagkakataon, ang mag-asawang Norris at Merlita ay magkasamang pupunta sa susunod na pulong ng Asosasyon ng Pilipino dito sa Yukon. I cannot say anything because I'm so thankful the help is there. Even though the sadness you back us up. Yeah. Well, uh, the good thing is that I'm here with my family. Yeah. Even though uh, I still got my daughter there, well, we can do this. Si Merlita ay nagtatrabaho bilang tagalini sa Whitehorse. Nagdadalamhati sa pagkawala ng kanyang panganay na anak. Nang inayang ako kasi hindi, hindi siya nakasama dito sa pangarap namin makarating dito tapos wala siya. Nang inayang talaga ako. Gusto ko makarating dito na lahat kami kompleto. Hindi ko alam kung ano nangyari, bakit magkaganoon biglang nawala. Nawala siya. Bigla na lang, wala na mong, wala na mong malaking dahilan para mawala siya. Bakit bigla? Wala. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, Daddy, pilitin natin makuha si Arian, my daughter, ba? And son-in-law, na may mawala na naman. Ganun. May happy ko kahit anong iutos niya gawin ko, trabaho ko, sige lang, okay lang. For my daughter and son-in-law. I don't know that many Filipinos in the Yukon, but I know that the ones that are here, the ones I know, are hard workers, and uh, um, they pick up the jobs that most Canadians don't really want to do. Yeah, they're welcome to come. I'm, I'm quite happy to to have more uh, foreign input into our culture here because it just expands what what we uh, what we learn, what we know. Pero sa ngay ngayon, uh, tanungin mo bakit pupunta ka sa Yukon, napakalamig, Saba sabi nga nila, doon frozen people daw. Maganda naman ang, kumpara sa mga ibang provinces siguro, maganda ang, ang sahod dito at saka uh, maganda ang mga, mga benefits. Ang naanuhan ko lang dito sa Yukon, it's, it's a good place to umpisa ng pamilya. One of the things that we're seeing as we move into the future is we're seeing an increase in the number of people that are moving here from the Philippines. Uh, our Filipino workers are a very integral part of our workforce in town. There are a number of businesses that <clears throat> have indicated that they, they wouldn't be able to survive if it wasn't about 
our Filipino workers that are that are here. Lumalakas ang ekonomiya ng Yukon at maraming puwang ang kailangan punuin. Libo-libong manggagawa ang kakailanganin. Another con- concern that I have here is whether or not there are enough of those entry-level type jobs here in Whitehorse to keep immigration going at the at the rate it's been going at. It's the people that have uh, that are established that are setting up new businesses, not the newcomers. Ngayon bubuksan ni Aileen ang kanyang bagong tindahan at karinderya. Napakalamig na araw sa Yukon. It's too cold to start the car, so we thought we'd just walk to a restaurant to eat. Give ourselves a little Sunday treat. Itong noon time, uh, nakakatuwa dahil uh, hindi pa kami gaano ano yung organized, pero naka-survive. You know, like, pero nagagalak ako dahil uh, sa unang uh, araw ng pag-open namin, kahit minus 40. You gotta wear, wear lots, wear lots of layers. You know, we got like four layers on here, plus down parkas, multiple layers in the midst here. And this is beaver, beaver fur, and this is hometown moose. I feel so honored na yung, uh, you know, uh, binigyan nila kami ng pagkakataon na ipatikim yung mga lutong bahay. Lahat ng ito hindi ko magagawa kung hindi dahil sa kanila. Um, you know, like a uh, uh, malaking uh, gratitude. You know, like ang binibigay ko sa mga tauhan sa likuran. And they're obviously very conscientious workers in the stores. You know, we see them all the time, Canadian Tire. And, uh, and they'll, they actually take you, if you have a question for them, they'll take you to the aisle and show you the item, whereas we never got that service before. <laughs> Binibigyan ng mag-asawang Joy at Peter ang mga bagong dating ang suportang di niya natanggap noon. Ipinagtitibay ang kanilang kultura habang nakikihalubilo sa kanilang bagong komunidad. You see Filipinos here wherever you go. So it's, uh, I think it's a lot easier in certain ways for the new arrivals, and yet it's more difficult in other ways. And uh, Joy assimilated easily because she had to. She didn't have any money. But now it's becoming more and more difficult for them to assimilate in the community. Because as you know, in uh, places like Richmond, the Chinese, they never have to speak English. It's just like being in Hong Kong. How could we live in the Yukon as part of the of the community, not just the Filipino community here, and here we are in this little corner? You know, that's that's not my vision of the Filipino Association. You know, we have a very good board. You know, I'm just about one vote, and there's a few, few board of directors, and we brainstorm, we talk a lot about ideas, and we talk about the future. We know that it's a challenge that we are growing. You know, it's a good thing that we're growing, but there's also some challenges. Whose fault is this? You can't blame the Filipinos for coming here. We wanted them here. You know, the Yukon wanted them here. That's why there's the Yukon Omni program. Now they're here, people start complaining. Well, you know, you've taken all the jobs. So, you know, damn, damn if you do, damn if... Bang masaya ang pangangalakal sa Yukon na kubuhan ng mga permanenteng Pilipinong manggagawa, ito ay lumilikha ng ilang problema. They're all staffed by full time. They can't take students who would work for them for three hours or five hours a week. They have to run a business. Now what about the our kids? Our children could not even get a summer job. So I don't know where that is going and if there's an answer to that. I was the first Filipino that arrived here in the Yukon and I'm still here in the Yukon. I never been discriminated in my life. I was, you know, I was not, I was always uh, treated uh, nice. And we asked around, you know, hey, you know, Filipinos, have you experienced an, any racism or discrimination? And mostly, or if not all, said, you know, I haven't. And this is, a, this is good news. This is really good for the Yukon. Ang Takini Hot Springs na may higit sa 40 Celsius na tubig ay ang paborito nilang bakasyonan. Sa wakas, mainit. Ah, see, see who's this? <laughs> You know what, I've heard a good news. I go to Marites' house and then uh, Marites told me that uh, her and Yvonne made a deal that uh, 
Marites wants to hire my daughter to work on her business, cleaning business. Eh? So hiring my daughter is kind of oh, very, very good news to me. Si Marites na nagmemeyari ng negosyo at miembro ng asosasyon ay interesado ng kuni ng anak na babae ni Norris para makapagtrabaho sa yuta. <laughs> no. Si Mahalea ay isang permanent resident na ngayon dito sa Canada at maaari nang bumalik sa Pilipinas para kunin ang kanyang anak na lalaki papuntang Yukon. Yeah, okay. yeah, uwi na kami sa Pilipinas kasi kailangan ko na rin kuhanin yung anak ko. So, pagbalik namin dito by June 20, kasama ko na yung panganay ko na anak. So, napakasaya at uh, makakasama ko na after three years. Ito na, finally, I will get him. <laughs> Yung bang mamimiss niya kasi yung mga pinsan niya. Kasi marami siyang pinsan, marami kami kamag-anak na nakapaligid sa amin. So, alam ko pagdating dito, mamimiss niya kasi wala naman kami gaano. Ang, ang nanay ko, alam ko mamimiss niya ng gusto. So, uli, <laughs> mag-get over niya lahat. Magbabago ang lahat. Ang kanyang tahanan, bagong kapatid at amahin. Ang pananalita at ang lamig. Sama-samang haharapin ng buong pamilya ang mga pagbabagong ito, tulad ng marami pang umalis ng Pilipinas. Umaasang magkaroon ng mas maginhawang buhay sa Yukon at umugat dito sa Canada. Sa kabila ng pag-aalinglangan, ang mga Pilipinong lumuwas dito sa maliit na komunidad sa Hilaga ay nagbibigay na ng matagintig na kontribusyon sa kanilang bagong ampong tahanan.